Let me go to the Stanford story then, because that is very relevant to what we're talking about. If you haven't seen what's going on, it's a very big story this week, Stanford Law School. Um, and I think this is very worrying for anybody who cares about free speech or about our future justice system and who are becoming the lawyers. Okay, so Stanford, like every elite college, is very, very, very liberal, but they do have something called the Federalist Society. This is a conservative society. Um, they don't like them, but they allow them on campus, and they invited a federal judge who Trump appointed. Now, this guy, is, he's, a, he's a very conservative guy. I mean, half the country's conservative, okay? He does, I don't agree with his rulings, but he's invited to speak on campus. Of course, we've seen this happen many, many times before. He shouted down, screamed at. The difference here is he's being yelled at by the students. We hate you. You don't belong here. These are law students, by the way. So he says, could somebody help me out? And the head of the DEI, right, is at, at this school, Tyrion Steinbeck. She got up there, and we just showed the little video to explain it better than I can. I look out, and I don't ask what is going on here. I look out, and I say, I'm glad this is going on here. <laughs> is the juice worth the squeeze? What is that? I mean, is it worth the pain that this causes and the division that this causes? Okay, so we didn't see the part where they were screaming at him, but that is what she's reacting to. And is it worth the pain? Is, is free speech worth the pain? And is it really painful? Is it really painful? If you don't like this guy, don't go to his lecture. I don't, I don't, I don't get why everything is about pain and harm. And yeah, so I, I represent a couple of universities now, including Michigan State University. It should be a place of free speech. It should be a place where all people, conservative, liberal, are allowed to come and speak. I also have to say, as someone who is heckled all the time in public speeches, including this week when we were talking about gun safety on the steps of the Michigan Capitol and we had a Second Amendment group, you know, with bullhorns while you're trying to speak, I mean, the speaker's being a little bit of a fragile flower here. Like, push through, man. Like, just keep going. And I, it was I, impossible. I mean, I, 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 from what I saw, it was kind of impossible. Okay, but would... and the students, no one should ever be threatening violence. We, that's never allowed. That's not part of your First Amendment rights. But I don't, I don't have a problem if someone comes and speaks, and I don't have a problem if people, in a civil and decent way, protest. And, and that you don't speech. have a problem if the officer. If the officer of the university gets up there and defends the hecklers and not the speaker, because that's what she did. She defended the hecklers, not the speaker. I don't, I don't know the circumstances well, here. You but, just saw it. That's but, I mean, exactly the, if, what you saw. If the university invited this person or allowed this person to come and speak, yeah. then they're hosting them. And by them. the way, they have apologized, the university. Well, there is a distinction between being uh, someone running for office and, and an invited speaker. And if you just reverse the situation, if you had a liberal speaker going to a conservative university uh, getting heckled, you would hope the administrators would stand up and say, look, there's an invited guest, we should hear them out. Uh, but that's the, that should be the standard. I mean, the University of Michigan has, um, I think, 142 DEI, that's diversity, equity, and inclusion staff members. That's a lot, is it not? I don't know what, uh, what 142 means, but I have no problem with organizations having a person who is there no, to look at diversity. No, I don't, I don't and either. Inclusion. But but has it become a cottage industry? I mean, is it something where th these are jobs now? Are these people ever going to want to give up their jobs? I, I don't. And, I don't I mean, have are any they gonna problem. Are going to go? Oh, oh you no, know. We, I don't have this, any problem with an institution are, looking is, at themselves and hiring people to do that. I have friends who do it for Fortune 100 companies. It's a good thing to do that. I don't know about 142 jobs, but I don't have a problem with institutions reflecting and trying to do better in in their own way. That I, I don't have a problem with. That. So, so when I. When I was running for president, I was trying to figure out why college has gotten two and a half times more expensive, and it has not gotten two and a half times better. Newsflash. Um, and, and, and it's because they've hired uh, two and a half times more administrators. So there, there's bloat in a lot of different directions. <laughs>